we're now going to set up the camera rig that's going to follow the ship. Uh, we're going to use a tool called Cinemachine, and I'll go a bit more into that in a second. But first thing I'm going to do is going to explain the play mode tint. And those who use Unity for a long while are probably already very comfortable with this. But something it's worth pointing out anyway to a lot of people who don't know it's there. I actually showed it to someone who'd used Unity like eight years, and they were like, when was that added? Amazing. Such a long time ago. So from now on to the rest of the workshop, we're going to be going to, into play mode and then leaving play mode at various points. So it's very good to know when you're in play mode and not, because when you're in play mode, any changes you make aren't necessarily retained. So for example, you could go into play mode, forget you're in play mode, make some tweaks, and then you leave play mode, and it slingshots you back to what your original state was Go into play, play mode. mode and so if I went into play mode, I say, oh, the ship, this should be here, and then let's take this and make it huge. Okay, this, this makes the game much better. Mike, I know you probably don't like this, but Bigger whatever. is better. We're in Texas. And then let's take this and then let's... Uh, delete it, delete it. Oh, you don't know how to delete on my English key or American keyboard. Okay, I'll duplicate it. <laughs> I'm a Mac user, so yeah. And now I can't move that. But yeah, anyway, so we have that ship and then you're like, oh, okay. The ship can now drive. Oh, I'm really attached to this. The, uh, you know, haven't shown the art director, so yeah. But then when you leave play mode, the ship is now back to the original state. And I've de delivered loads of workshops where people have actually done this. They've actually built the whole training day and then they're like, oh, okay, great. I've now got to roll back to the beginning. So when you enter play mode, by default, you'll notice that the editor will actually tint around the game and scene view. There's very subtle tints in the, um, in the light skin, you'll notice it. Um, in the duck skin, you'll notice it, it's a bit harder to see. But you can actually change the color of this tint. So, if you're on Windows, you would go to Edit. And you can definitely follow along and just do this right now. We wanna make sure everyone has play mode tint. And if you, the play buttons at the top of your editor right now are blue, leave play mode. That means you're in play mode. But we're, and we're gonna add some play mode tint here. So if you're on Windows, uh, they're different locations, but kind of similar. So on Windows, you go to Edit, then Preferences. And on Mac, you click the little Unity text, and then you'd go um, Preferences as well. Unity, yeah, it's Edit Preferences on PC, Unity Preferences on Mac. Just to confuse people. Hey. Um, and when you're in this window, you go to the Color section, and this allows you to customize different things, such as the selection outline, which is by default orange. Um, if a property is being animated, you can even change the XYZ axis colors, which is kind of cool. Um, and here we have play mode tint. So Mike, give me a nice color. 255, 0, 255. 255, 0, 255. That looks horrible, but that's fine. That was the hex editor and not the, uh, I gave that to you in RGB. <laughs> <laughs> so FF, 0, 0, FF, if you want to do hex. There we go, that's even better. Yeah, you will never not know that you're in play mode. Bam. <laughs> this is not a uh, shader error, it is just literally tinting it. So you can see there, it's very, very obvious. Um, sometimes people do it blood red, so it's like stop, don't you know, change any stuff in the inspector. Um, but yeah, you can set it to that. We could probably do something a little more subtle for the rest of the day. Um, <laughs> by subtle, you mean the default, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so when we go, say go into play mode, go into play mode, test your game, but then remember to leave play mode afterwards. Yeah, any changes you make while you're in play mode will not be saved. So just be sure, play mode tint, know when you're in play mode. Okay, cool, that was a, a mini step, a sub step. A yes. A nested step. An important um, step. So now we're gonna do the ship's camera rig, because currently the ship's camera, or the general camera of the game, is fitted or stuck to a particular point. We want the camera to follow the ship, because currently the ship will move without the camera following it. We could do this in kind of three, well, there's probably a lot more, but sort of three basic ways. Yeah. Three basic ways. One is we could be incredibly lazy and just take the main camera and make it a child of the ship, and then it will move with the ship all the way around. That's okay, how people that guy's like cheering. That's, I'm not sure that's a good <laughs> sign or a bad sign. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. We'll remember who that is. <laughs> you, you can just have a nap for the next 20 minutes, it's fine. So for example, if I took my uh, scene view camera positioned here, um, selected the main camera and did game object aligned with view, so it's positioned like this, I could be incredibly lazy and just attach the main camera as a child of the ship. And then we go into play mode. Actually doesn't, oh, oh, oh God. Welcome to Nazia City. So if anyone's a VR developer, definitely don't do this. 
Of course, you could, you could go uh, a little more interesting and attach it to the actual ship body that rolls. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Soak it in. Do we prepare the sick buckets? <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a little bag under everyone's chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New swag. Um, so we have that option. We could chart it. We're not going to do that. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have a very good result. The other option we could do is we could write a really long script that then adapts to how the ship moves. So as the ship pulls out, the camera then has a little bit of damping and pulls behind it, changes the field of view. When you hit a wall, it may like shake, and it has all these different things. Now, we could go through another Mike Geig long explanation and probably use PIDs at some point. Oh yeah, all sorts of code. Um, but we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're actually gonna use Cinemachine. And Cinemachine is a suite of procedural adaptive camera rigs that we've acquired like, uh, yeah, last year, maybe? Yep. Um, you've probably seen it in the keynotes or in various presentations. And we're actually going to use Cinemachine for all the camera rigs, all the camera setups that we have in this, uh, this project, both from following the ship, but also the intro cutscene as well, uh, which is uh, sequenced by timeline. So we then need to set up the camera and set up a basic Cinemachine rig. Now, when you have Cinemachine imported from the Asset Store, because it sits separately from Unity, so it's actually all written in c -sharp, so you can actually modify it and tweak um, and create your own rigs if you really wanted to. And you'll notice that when it's imported, we have this option at the top of Cinemachine. And here we have a bunch of different rigs that are already pre-set up. So we've got things like a free look rig, which is a third person game, um, to orbit something. We have state driven rig, which then hooks into animator. Um, we then have the dolly camera, which we actually have later on. 2D camera, we've got these different rigs. We're only gonna use one of them right now, um, uh, which is gonna be the virtual camera. Now before we do that, we need to prime our main Unity camera to use Cinemachine. Um, because you may have 10 cameras in your game, but you don't want all of them to be sequenced by or controlled by Cinemachine, maybe just one of them. So what you need to do is you need to select the main camera. Or I'm going to do this now, and then we'll, we'll have the steps afterwards. Now, this isn't Cinemachine related. We're actually going to change the rendering path from wherever you use graphic settings is, which I think is forward by default. By default forward. Um, and we're going to change it to deferred. This isn't Cinemachine related. This is actually going to help out with um, things like our lighting reflections and when we come to post-processing as well, but one thing you'll notice is that on this uh, metal grate here, if I change this back to use graphic settings, it's gonna be really, really dark, so the reflections aren't necessarily gonna come through, and some of you might have noticed this when we were setting that up earlier on. Instead, if we change it to deferred, you'll notice that the metallic is a little bit better, because deferred is better for lighting and reflections and all that. Deferred nice. is just basically another way of rendering, which gives us access to a whole new collection of, of image effects and cool things we can do. So yeah. This isn't Cinemachine related, but whilst we're on the camera, we might as well do it. So to take our main Unity camera and get it to be controlled or adapted by Cinemachine, we need to add a component called the Cinemachine Brain. And there's actually a lot of Cinemachine um, components that we can play around with. So underneath the component section, there's a Cinemachine dropdown, and we have all these different settings, uh, all the different components we can add, and we can add a Cinemachine Brain. So what this does is it basically tells this Unity camera, okay, listen out for a Cinemachine camera that's gonna be influencing in some way. And kind of the, the metaphor I use for describing Cinemachine is imagine the main Unity camera is kind of like a relay race baton, and each runner in a race is a different Cinemachine camera. Basically, each camera is gonna be passing that main Unity camera from one to another. So if you transition from a cutscene to a follow camera, you're passing it from one Cinemachine camera to another Cinemachine camera. And the brain is basically saying, this is the baton that's being passed. Hopefully people know what a relay race is and it's not just a very British. They may not know what a baton is, but. Uh... So what's the, transla what's the translation of baton from? Oh, uh, baton. <laughs> We're gonna have this a lot right now. Right now, half the audience is like, oh, a baton. Oh, all right, I don't understand. It's, it's also important to mention, like, so Andy had talked about one of the ways we could do this was with a lot of code. We could write a code, uh, write some code that controls this camera. And really what we can do, what that is, is that's explicit instruction. That's saying, camera, do this. Camera, you're gonna do that in an explicit way, behavioral, with this code. What Cinemachine allows us to do is instead define intention. Camera, I want you to do something like this. I, I want kind of this. I don't, I don't know how you're going to do it, but this is what I want. And then Cinemachine does the translation for us. It turns what we intend to happen into what actually happens happens, which makes it really powerful. You're about to see as we're just going to define what we want the camera to do and how it does it is, is just kind of up to the code behind the scenes. 
So for our current setup, the actual default Cinemachine brain is great. Um, there's one thing I want to point out, and that's we have here the live camera, which is which Cinemachine camera, which Cinemachine rig it's currently using. In this case, none, so this, the behavior is going to be exactly the same as um, currently how it is. Now, if I, I'm going to just move my camera back to kind of where people were um, and align that. Now, we have our uh, main camera set up. Now we create a Cinemachine camera. So if we go to Cinemachine, or if I'm going to go to Cinemachine and create a virtual camera, one thing you'll notice is it will create a brand new game object, and I'm going to rename that to follow cam. And on this, what the Cinemachine virtual camera does is it doesn't actually render your game. It's just a bunch of values and settings, well, a whole bunch of values and settings, which has a lot of math and algorithms, as Adam Myhill likes to say. Yes. Um, basically pumping out a transform position rotation, which then the main Unity camera is going to use. So in a typical game using um, Cinemachine, you'd have sort of maybe one main Unity camera, and then a ton of Cinemachine cameras for CCTV cameras, follow cameras, cutscenes, fly-throughs. You can put image effects like post-processing on individual cameras and do some cool stuff like that and blend in between them. So it's basically not actually, re it's not actually a camera, it's just a bunch of values being passed to a camera. So a virtual camera. A virtual camera, yeah. There you go. So what you'll notice here is that we have a whole load of options. And if you like sliders in Unity, as people keep telling us, you're going to have fun because we have a lot of sliders. Now, I'm not going to go through every single slider because that will probably take all day. I'm going to go through some key ones that is going to be useful for our rig. And I definitely urge you to later on play around with these because you can get some really weird and really, really cool um, sort of end results using Cinemachine. But the ones that I'm sort of interested in is look at and follow. So look at, we'll ask for a transform. This could be any transform in your game. You could look at pretty much anything. In this case, we want to look at the ship. So we can click the little selector, find our ship, and select that. And one thing you'll notice is that once the ship has been set up, uh, once the camera's been set up to look at the ship, we now have some guidelines, um, and I'll talk about these in a second. Um, and it'll also automatically look at the ship. It's kind of like if you automatically wrote a look at transform script, but this has a lot more options than that just simple one line of code. Now one thing you'll notice is that if I select the main Unity camera, uh, if I select the ship and move it around, the Cinemachine camera is then going to follow the ship wherever it is on the screen. So actually if I went into play mode, if the ship is this far off the ground, is it going to? It's just going to fall. Using our custom gravity. It all comes full circle. So one thing you'll notice is that if I select the uh, follow camera, the camera is now kind of like a CCTV, so it's actually following the ship where it is. Obviously, the game is now still like you know Dark Souls level of racing game, um, <laughs> but it's basically acting as a CCTV camera following uh, this transform. This isn't ideal for us at all. And let's move the ship actually back where it was because that's probably better. That's there good. we go. So if we go back to the follow camera, we not only want it to look at the ship, we also want it to follow the ship. So we can pass it the same transform. And you'll notice it'll instantly pop behind the ship. So it's looking at the ship and following it. You can have setups where you follow, for example, a character, but look at a point of interest and blend in between that, kind of, I guess, Assassin's Creed style or Zelda, things like that. Now if we went into play mode with these default settings, we then have a uh, admittedly a pretty terrible rig. I'm, I'm not going to you know, hype this up at all. Um, but we can sort of race around the track. And this is kind of, I guess, a little bit similar to just childing the, uh, the main camera to the ship. And actually the... I you can see the dead zones there, which is pretty cool. Gives the uh, ship some variance. Yeah. So we have this set up here. Now this is not ideal in any, in any situation, so we then need to change um, some of the other settings. And what you'll notice here is we have three or oh, four basically main modules of every Cinemachine camera. One is the lens. This is the settings that the main camera is going to take. So it's like stuff like field of view, um, near plane, uh, near clipping plane, far clipping plane, and stuff like that. Next one is body. Next one is aim. Next one is noise. And these all then combine all their settings together to then apply the final camera rig position. So the body is actually the position of the camera from its follow and look at target. So if I zoom out and open up body, you have lots of different options. Again, Cinemachine comes with a million options. We could easily do a three-day training thing on just all the Cinemachine stuff, if you're, you're really into mm -hmm. that. Um, but what you can see here that I can then change the body settings, and it's going to change the position of the virtual camera. So if I set this to be like uh, 1.5, it's then going to move slightly up, so it's not directly beneath it. 
I'm going to show up all the settings at the end in, in well, when you don't have to write all these down. We're going to have minus three because so it's not too far away. Now, one thing that's going to happen is that our ship is then going to move off. And we don't want to follow the ship as it moves off. We want to have a slow damping. So as the ship pulls off, the camera's going to drag behind. And when you break, the camera, the ship's then going to pull into the camera, or the camera's going to pull into the ship. One of the reasons people get motion sick is when the, a camera follows something exactly, and it feels like the same entity with an offset. So instead, we add dampening. This allows the ship to pull, and then the vehicle, as if it was attached by a rubber band or an elastic band, which says, oh, we're separate entities. And so I no longer need to be motion sick, because that's not me. I'm me. And there's no mental disassociation going on, and we're good. right? And so. By having some damping, you're gonna, it's going to make your game much more palatable. Um, so the default value of x for damping is actually fine at 1. Next is going to be 0.1. Um, so we have the x damping at 1, um, which is basically going to pull it back a bit. And we don't really care about the drift damping side by side, so this is uh, ideal. Next one is the binding mode. So we can actually set what the lock uh, target is of the virtual camera. In this case, we're going to lock it to the target which means that as the target banks, then the follow camera is going to follow and bank along with it. And here, rather than 000, <laughs> um, I'm going to set it to 0, 0.1, 2, and 3. And these are actually settings that Adam Maiho added into Cinemachine based off of this workshop, which Adam is pretty Adam cool. being the creator of Cinemachine, yes. Uh, Go up to him, ask him his favorite camera lens, and you'll be there for uh, hours. hours, yeah. Next thing is the aim. So this is not the position of the main camera. It's actually where the actual tracked object is on the screen. Now, we can change all these sliders because people seem to love sliders with Unity. Or instead, we can actually grab these different dead zones and actually move them around. So for example, if I want the ship to be like, the, you know, this is, OK, that's going to look terrible, or above, you can actually notice that you can procedurally kind of manipulate and tweak the position that you're looking at. Similarly, you can grab these dead zones and pull them in and out. And what this is going to do is it, um, that yellow marker is going to move inside the middle soft zone. When it reaches the edge, then the camera is going to adapt to um, uh, is going to adapt to stay within that zone. So if I undo that back to here, if I actually go into play mode, obviously this is going to look terrible. You'll notice that the ship will then the, that yellow marker is then staying inside that soft zone. But when it moves to the edge of that blue area. The red being a real hard stop and blue being kind of a soft stop. You notice there's a little bit of damping that's taking place as well. Obviously, you know, I've played this 100 times, so OK, but I still crash. Um, obviously, this is an ideal, so we want to change this. So what we want to do is rather than look down at the ship, we want to look slightly up in the direction you're moving in, which is pretty ideal for a racing game. So 0 0.7. And here's another trick from Mr. Adam Myhill, Master of Cameras, is that rather than looking at the nose of the ship, you look forward from the ship. So you look at where the ship's going to be. So then that way, the ship will bank, or the camera will adapt side to side, as opposed to you know, on a pivot. So you set this value to be a Z of 30, far into the distance. Now, obviously, the ship is pulled out, and we can change this in a second. Um, and next, we want to play around with these dead zones. So rather than the ship stays and wiggles inside the dead zones, we want to, when we uh, move from side to side, the camera to update almost instantly. So we can change the uh, dead zone weight to zero and zero. Of course, I could do that um, and change that with the, the mouse, um, you know, and position it like so. But instead, it's zero and zero. And the last thing is way too zoomed in. Some of you are probably thinking, is this guy, like, does he need glasses or something? Um, is we can actually change the field of view. So this will actually adapt the field of view from the main Unity camera. So rather than looking into the future or looking into the distance, we can actually, pull it, we can actually go full, full AAA. No. So fast. Yeah, go, go fast. Instead, we're going to set it to 100. So it's, looking, it's following the ship, but it's looking just ahead of the ship. And you'll notice this, that when I go into play mode, that's not the play mode button. You'll notice that when the ship is um, static, it's at this position. But because we have that very subtle damping, as the ship accelerates, it's moving slightly further ahead. And you'll notice that as that point moves, the camera is then following the ship, and the rig is then adapting to the position of the camera. So it's a lot nicer. So you could easily you could ignore this and just write your own script and then be here, and then come back to Unite 2018 and say, oh, I finished my script. Or you could download Cinemachine. <laughs> And change a bunch of sliders. Yep. And then now you can, OK, I clearly haven't played this game enough. So we have a very basic uh, racing rig that adapts to um, our ship. 
So, if I were to go all through the, all that again, um, go to the main camera, change the rendering path from use graphic settings, which is using forward, to deferred, add a Cinemachine Brain component to the main Unity camera, then under the Cinemachine dropdown, create a brand new virtual camera, not any of the other ones, it won't work, uh, create a brand new base virtual camera, rename it to follow cam, set the follow cams uh, look at and follow to be the ship, and then there's a bunch of sliders and a bunch of settings which will show up a screenshot at the end to change. Um, and then after the workshop, obviously go away, play around with it, change the settings, um, yeah. Now one, thi one thing I didn't go through is noise. So you can actually apply a very subtle uh, Perlin noise to your camera, just kind of like handheld shaky cam. This is not ideal for this racing game in any, in any capacity, but if you wanted to add that, you totally could show us afterwards and we'll see what, you, what you've made, what vomit simulator you've made, I guess. Um, and these are, the steps.